Hello friends. This video on structure of Adam Bar 30 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exams. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 29. Now we'll talk about 980 quantum number. It gives the information about the orientation of the orbital. Till now we have seen the L, the azimuthal quantum number gives the shape of the orbital, whether it is a S shape, P shape, D shape. So this guy gives the orientation of the orbital with respect to coordinate x. For a given subshell or L, I can have two L plus one values of M. That is minus L minus L minus one L does as zero to L. I'll explain that. For example, value of L is zero here, right? That means S. So number of orbitals is one. This guy is one, so I can have values from minus one, zero and one. The number of orbitals is three. This guy is two, I can have values from minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two. How many? Five. There is five. So that's how. So if you see, this is my S orbital. For S orbital, there is only one shape. Then I have P orbitals. For P orbital, I have three shapes. One, two, three. Three orientation actually. For D orbital, if you see, I have five different orientation. One, two, three, four, five. We'll explain in detail for all these. Just understand that for S, there is only one orientation. For S, S there is only one orientation. For P, there are three orientations. For D, there are, because this is S, this is P, this is D. For D, there are five orientations. Similarly, for F, there are seven orientation. And continue. Magnetic orbital, let's take an overview now. For example, this is my P orbital. So if you see the way it is done, this is Px, which is where it is inclined to x. Py, because this guy is in y-axis. This guy is Pz. We have p orbitals in four different shapes. This is one way everything is combined actually. All p, x, y, z is combined. And if you see, this is 1s, 2s is bigger. px is this way, py is along y axis, pz is along z axis. So if we talk about d, so d, if you see for d, we had 5 five different uh, orientations. This guy is D, Y, Z because Y, Z is the plane where I have this uh, orbitals. This is D, X, Y because X, Y is the plane where I have this uh, orbitals. This is D, X, Z because X, Z is the plane where I have this orbitals. This is D, X square minus Y square, X and Y in like this fashion. And this is D, Z square because I'm Z, X. So these are five different orientation of the D orbitals. Similarly, for F also we have, uh, for F, I think we have uh, seven, seven uh, different options and this is how the seven different orientations are there for F orbitals. Right, you see, all are F orbitals but their orientation is different. So, magnetic orbital number will determine the orientation of this orbitals. There is something called electronic spin also as I told, right, each and every uh, here my orbital will have two electrons, two electrons, this guy will have two electrons, maybe this guy will have, everything will have two electrons, this whole thing will have two electrons somewhere, only two, this is one orbital, this will have two electrons, somewhere maybe both are in the same area also, you don't know right, each, each and every will have two electrons, jumping and pumping around here and there, right, so since there are two electrons, each may have different spins, in fact, both will have different spin, one clockwise, one counterclockwise. And that is denoted by spin quantum number. So three quantum numbers which we have got, N, L, M, N, principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number, they are not sufficient to predict uh, the atom. They are sufficient to predict the, or to pinpoint the orbitals, right, with N, L, M, N, N, L and M, we can tell which orbital it is, but in orbital we have two electrons. So we can't tell which electron we are talking about. So we have a more quantum number called 
spin quantum right both all this quantum number like are enough to are not enough to explain the line spectra which is observed in the case of multi electron so we have this third quantum numbers because to find the exact electron we need the fourth attribute also so this guy in 1925 proposed the presence of fourth quantum numbers that's called electron spin quantum number it can have two values plus 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 that's all so you see electron spins around its own axis it can be clockwise or anti clockwise and that's what it is denoting so if you see it's a plus up spin or down spin and the values is plus 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 because electron spin this electron the spins also right it can be either clockwise or anti clockwise only two option it has the orbitals cannot have more than two electrons and these two electrons should have opposite spin please note one orbital i have told already cannot have more than two electrons and these two electron should have opposite spin at the max two electron it can have one electron also the valence electron uh, orbitals generally have one electrons so let's understand the quantum number tree view so let's suppose we'll start from here so we have uh, uh quantum numbers right so it can have a value of n can have as a n here n n can have a value of 1 it can have value of 2 it can have value of 3 or it can have value of Four also correct. If n is equal to one, my l can have value only zero because it has to be zero to n minus one. Here, n n is equal to one, l can have two values zero and one. If n is equal to three, n can have value three values zero, one, and two. So, if for four, my l will be zero, one, two, and three. Three possible values for l. If we talk about m, for l is equal to zero, m can have only one value, zero. For l is equal to again okay, for zero can have only one value. For for one, it can have three values, minus one, zero, and plus one. Here also, if you see, for zero, it can have only one value, zero. For this guy, minus one, zero, and plus one. For two also, it can have five values now. Minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two. Like that, it will continue. Here also we can continue. Now I have something called spin quantum number, right? This is called spin quantum. So for this, I can have two values: plus one by two and minus one by two. In fact, for any of these, I can have two values: plus one by two and minus one. For each of these, right, I'll have two values: plus one by two, minus one by two, plus one by two, minus one. And that is how the T structure for a quantum number. That means for a given number, right, this, this, if you take this path, right, I can tell one electron. For example, if I know this, 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 and this, these four values will uniquely give a particular electron. And these three values and element will give a unique orbital. Correct. Let's take a summary for the four quantum numbers we shared just earlier. We have something called cells, subcells, and orbitals. And n, this n defines the cells. Also, it determines the size, and to a large extent, the energy. And there are n cells in the n n subcells in the n cell, which I have done. And there, l identifies the subshells. Also, the shape of subshells. So, L is something which defines that. And then we have orbitals, right? And the orbital is nothing but two L plus one. The number of orbitals we have. For example, for S, I have one orbital. For P, you have three orbital. For D, you have five orbitals, and so on. L also determines the energy of electron in multi-electron atom. So. the rules are complex but for our understanding we can say that n plus l will determine the energy of 
an orbital. The one with higher value of n plus l will say that that has both energy. And this magnetic quantum number designates orientation of orbital. So for a given value of l, my ml has two l plus one values, right? And ms refers to orientation of spin of electron. This is what we have studied. We'll take some examples. What is the total number of orbitals associated with quantum number three? So let's take this. If my n is equal to three, my l can have value. 0, 1 and 2, right? I have to find number of orbitals. So my p, if I, for 0, I have only one orbital. For this guy, I have orbital minus 1, 0 and plus 1. For 2, I can have orbitals minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. So if you add, how many orbitals I have got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 9 orbitals I have got. Also, I can use the formula directly. n square is nothing but the number of orbitals. So n is equal to 3, I get 3 square. That is 9 orbitals. So you can use any of these. Correct. But understand both of them either, because this clears your concept. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.